Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Team APS, Paul here. And today we're going to be talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Oricas. So if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan and you've been on the internet for any length of time, you've probably run into these cards somewhere. So maybe you were trying to buy a card on eBay and you happened to see what was called an Orica version of the card. Or maybe you saw them on some place like Etsy or even Instagram. You saw these weird custom cards that look different. Well, Oricas stands for Original Cards, and they're basically that. They are original Yu-Gi-Oh cards that use custom artwork, and they can be used for a variety of purposes and created in a variety of styles. For instance, you can take a super rare or ultra rare card and turn it into a secret rare. Or maybe you like the full art versions of cards where the artwork extends completely to the edge of the card like they have in games like Pokemon, but you want it as a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Orcas can also do that. You can make Orca cards that resemble the style of cards that they use in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime where it just shows the monster's attack and defense and no effect. Or you could even just make a fun custom card that's just kind of a joke for you to use when you're playing with your friends. So these Yu-Gi-Oh! Orcas actually have a variety of different purposes that you can use them for. The most common is probably just using them as token cards. You've likely seen this even at regionals or YCS events where people will basically take token cards, the existing ones that Konami makes, and replace the artwork on the card with another card's artwork, or even artwork from their favorite video game or their favorite anime. And this is really simple and really easy. You can even make like secret rare token cards which look really cool. Another recent use is actually as field centers. So thanks to Master Rule 4, the placement of cards actually matters, and so Konami has printed official field center cards. What's cool about Oricas though is that you can actually use them as your field centers and instead of having to go with the pre-made ones that Konami's got out already, you could use any artwork you want, Yu-Gi-Oh! or otherwise. And perhaps the most useful application of Oricas is actually as stand-ins for real cards or proxy cards as people usually call them. So say for instance it's a card that's very expensive and you don't really want to commit to buying it yet but you want to be able to play test with it and not just have to play online, actually have the card in your hand. Or maybe it's a prize card that's printed in limited quantities and you just know that realistically you'll never be able to get your hands on it. It could even be something that's currently out in the OCG and might be coming soon to the TCG so you want to play test with the card or the deck and learn how it works before you decide if you build it or not. In those cases Oricas are perfect. However, keep in mind that Oricas are not real tournament legal Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They're perfectly fine if you're playing with your friends, but don't expect to be able to use them at your locals, at a regional, at a YCS. That is not allowed. So the next logical question is, how are these Orca cards made? Well, think back to the time as a kid when you, you know, cut out a piece of paper and like glued it onto a Yu-Gi-Oh card to try to make your own new custom card. It's basically like that except a little bit more involved. So the basic idea is that you can take an existing Yu-Gi-Oh card, like a secret rare card, and de-ink it, which basically removes the artwork from the card. This is done using things like acetone. Then you can create your design in Photoshop. They're very specific image resolutions that you want to use, and then you print it out onto transparent sticker paper and apply it to the card. That is just a very condensed version of how Orcas are made. If you want more complete information from a much better source than just me, I'll have a link in the description to a guide where you can learn how to make Orca cards for yourself. Note though that this is done at your own risk, so don't use a card that you actually value and try to turn it into something crazy. Or maybe you want to skip all of that and just know where you can get Orca cards, like buy them online for yourself or have them custom made. Well, like I said, you can find them on eBay, you can find them on dedicated Etsy stores, there are also Instagram accounts where people make these and feature them, and some of these people will do them as commissions, others just kind of make them for themselves or their friends. However, a really great source that I've found is Transcend Games. So they make custom Orca cards in all sorts of different styles. So you've got the full art cards, you've got the rarity transformations and cards that you can use as field centers or tokens. They actually provided all of the Orca cards that you guys saw in this video. So I can definitely vouch for the quality of these things. If you're interested in getting some Orca cards from them, I'm gonna have a link to their website in the video description. They're very inexpensive, the quality is great, so I highly recommend it. So that is your primer to Oricas in Yu-Gi-Oh! So next time you see that cool custom card online or at your shop, you'll know what it is and how it was made. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments, what was your favorite Orca that you saw in this video? And if you were to make one yourself, what cool concept would you use? Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and learned a bit. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos like this. 
And without further ado, I will see you guys in the next one. Pass turn.